Most of my videos are not about Morioka itself, but rather all the things that you can do outside of Morioka. I wanted to take a little bit of time to show you some of the things you can do while you are in town. I know no one really uses guidebooks anymore, and that's a good thing. Um, partially because Lonely Planet, which I used when I backpacked a lot as well, has hardly a page on Morioka. In fact, Iwate in general is, is a footnote, sort of. And there are so many great places to eat, stay, and visit in and around Morioka. Now, with the internet, hopefully people do a little bit of research and can discover that, but I still notice there's not enough information about all of the amazing places to visit in this area, and so I will be doing my best to fill that gap. One of the things that I love about the city is all of the great green space around the rivers and all of the bridges with fantastic views of Mount Iwate. The bridge that I'm near now is Kayunbashi, and pop! I am now on the Kayunbashi Bridge, and you can see a gorgeous view of Mount Iwate. Okay, now I'm back here on the riverside on a different day. And it's easy to think about Morioka in terms of several different areas of interest. The area right around Morioka Station has a shopping mall called Fezan, um, several cafes, a liquor store, and tons of different restaurants and izakayas. A short walk from that across the Kayunbashi and along that road straight down will take you to the Odori area. This Odori area is the principal nightlife area of Morioka and is a huge concentration of bars, izakayas, restaurants, all sorts of things like that. Just beyond Odori, you go to Odori, which you'll recognize by the covered mall as you get there. Once you get past Odori, then on your right, you'll have the Morioka Castle Park. Now, the Morioka Castle Park has a shrine right in front of it, Sakurayama Jinja, and to the left of that shrine is an area of old Showa-era shops. I was thinking today to show you one of the more famous types of noodles of Morioka, one of the three great noodles of which are Luanko Soba, uh, Morioka Ramen, and Jajamen. The one that is here is Jajamen, and Jajamen is of Chinese origin, which nearly everything is, of course. Sort of a flat udon with a, a miso paste, and the most famous place to get it is this place right here, Pairon, or White Dragon. <laughs> So this is jajamen. As you can see, there are flat udon noodles. There's a meaty a miso paste on the top. As optional things that you can add on to this, there is a spicy oil that you can add on, as well as more grated garlic. If it's not enough garlic for you, it's never enough garlic, is it? And they also recommend adding salt, pepper, and vinegar. So all of those things are right here for you. Let's begin. When you get to about this much noodles left, then you turn it over to them, put an egg in, some boiled water, a little more sauces, and it becomes chi tan <laughs> And this is chi tan tan, which we can then add our own oil, spices, whatever we want to it. The key to enjoying this is to flavoring it the way you want, adding just the right amount of garlic, salt, oil, things like that. Mm. So what I just learned from talking with them is that the grandfather of the fellow who's in there running the shop right now went and was living during the war in Manchuria, in northern China and he really liked the, the flavor of the miso and the jajamen that he ate there in China. And so when after the war he returned to Japan, he started this restaurant, which has now been in business for just over 60 years. Along this little bicycle path, you'll find this cafe, Fukakusa. You can see right here, this building all covered in ivy. And it's one of the few places in Morioka, or anywhere in Japan really, where you can sit outside along a walking and cycling path facing a beautiful little river. So if you're walking around town and you're anywhere near here, I highly recommend this as a place to um, have a break after all you're walking or cycling and um, enjoy some of their rather delicious coffee.